Pretty much a lacklustre day when you look at the movements on the Nairobi Stock Exchange. As I mentioned, Safaricom being one of the most actively traded stocks uh, today. Of course, we have had a few public holidays in between. Uh, tell us about what's driving sentiment at this point in Kenya. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think with the market coming out of uh, the Easter holidays, there was not, the market wasn't really meant to do volumes today. Uh, the sentiment uh, maybe driving it forward, at least within the next month, would be any further corporate actions. Uh, last week or this week, we see a continuation of uh, mostly dividend policies that are coming through, mm -hmm. like um, Kennel Cobill and uh, Carbacid, as you mentioned. But largely, there's nothing uh, in particular driving this market at this moment. We hope that uh, first quarter expectations, uh, particularly from the banking sector, will be able to move the index a bit more. Mm. Uh, with regards to where one should be putting their money right now, I mean, we're looking at the, the announcement of such dividends. Would you be heading into the likes of Carbacid and, of course, uh, Kennel Goebel in uh, anticipation of receiving those dividends? Well, if, uh, it depends on your client, but if, if, your agent, if your idea was to get a good dividend yield, then a counter like Kennel Cobalt will definitely um, mm. uh, be a good one to buy into, considering the stability of the share price. As for carb acid and BOC, uh, you don't have much say in, in, in terms of volume. You can't buy these companies in bulk, yeah. so it's not really worth it. Mm. Uh, but going forward, uh, if you're looking at inflation, uh, you want a company that can give you capital and, and dividend growth at the same time. Let's turn our attention to the shilling. Uh, we mentioned a little earlier that uh, there is a lot of concern about uh, the vote that is set to come up. Of course, we know that post-election violence, uh, a scenario that played out in Kenya in 2007-2008 as well. They're talking about the Kenyan shilling weakening to around 84.38 against the US dollar. Do you think that that could be a reality? Uh, yes, it could be a reality, uh, not necessarily due to the political situation, but more fundamentally that uh, we are being affected by largely oil shocks and, and, and these will continue to play out in the balance of payments. And as much as uh, the elections will bring uncertainty, I think the underlying factor is uh, can the CBK manage uh, liquidity to an extent that inflation uh, can be uh, suppressed mm -hmm. and this is something we've seen at least w within the, uh, the last few uh, weeks that they have deliberately um, tried to keep money markets tight in order to contain exchange rate volatility so in the long run I think uh, uh, 84 is definitely uh, a level it will be sustained at for, yeah. for fundamental reasons and even in the short term depending on what inflation uh, statistics mm. come out of course, and I mean, I'm glad you mentioned inflation. We had the March inflation number uh, rising to 9.91%. And just this year, we saw uh, the Kenyan Central Bank uh, cutting rates and then subsequently seeing a much higher inflation rate than anticipated. And then we saw a 25 basis point rate hike. Uh, we know that the Central Bank has been perhaps uh, focusing on growth relative to inflation. How do you see that uh, tug of war playing out going forward? Well, I think uh, the central bank point of view is that as long as there's growth, uh, the inflation uh, problem is, can be tackled uh, by a, an increase in real output. But I think what uh, we're seeing now is, uh, from their point of view, is a reaction to the short-term volatility in the exchange rate. And uh, that's what a lot of currency traders have been uh, reacting to. Whenever they see inflation going up in the short run, they speculate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think what the central bank needs to do is to make the rates more relevant. For example, the central bank rate. If you're going to say you cut, make an interest rate cut or raise interest rates, people need to respond to this. And I think this is something they're doing now. Uh, they're addressing that problem. And uh, there's a bit of a debate going on about whether we should be targeting inflation or whether we should be targeting uh, reserve money. And I think now the, the bias is towards inflation targeting. Mm. Well, Alex, it's quite fascinating. We know that gold is a great hedge against inflation, but equities are as well. Do you think that in an environment with much higher inflation rates, the equity market is the place to be? 
yes, I think within the scope of financial instruments, equities would provide that uh, buffer uh, towards inflation seeing as uh, the returns are potentially higher. But there could be another dynamic that uh, couples with the, 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 the risks from political uh, the, the elections next year that we may actually see a shift from financial assets to physical assets. And that means uh, sectors such as the real estate sector may be the beneficiaries. Uh, attracting a lot of the real, the real retail investors now invested in the NSE. Uh, with regards to turnover going forward, uh, just to end off, of course, it has been a, a week of holidays. Everyone is focusing, of course, on Easter as well. Uh, we had turnover down to 377 million from the previous session of 761 uh, million shillings. What kind of uh, turnover can we expect going forward this week, Alex? Um, I think you'll have to look at it in a in a variety of ways. Um, if, if you look at it from the foreign side, that turnover should be consistent. Uh, they generally buy uh, to make margins and, uh, and so their participation is uh, fairly predictable. Uh, retail uh, investors are likely not to participate so much I I in the market unless they can get bargains. And, and they largely react to uh, corporate actions, mm -hmm. of which there are very few at the moment. Uh, institutional investors are facing a, a bit of liquidity problems, so I don't think they want to commit their money into investments that, uh, in, in the absence of liquidity.